I've purchased two brand new iPhone 16s to take apart and assess their repairability. One phone is simply not enough to determine repairability because of parts pairing. Software that prevents a replacement part from working as intended, even though the part might be an original in working condition. I've demonstrated this very practice on four consecutive iPhone models. But iOS 18 on the iPhone 16 is supposed to change how we repair iPhones. Let's get both phones unpacked so that we can get them ready to take apart. This year I've chosen white and blue models. The contents of the box has reduced since last year's model, now no longer including any Apple stickers. With both phones now unpacked, it's time I get them set up to ensure they're working. What is immediately apparent is just how wobbly these phones are when placed on a table. The redesigned camera bump is the cause. Both of these devices are running iOS 18.0, are 128GB in capacity, and are Australian models. The outer design of this phone is very similar to last year's, only featuring a new camera layout and the introduction of a new button. Sony users might confuse it for a power button, but it's actually Apple's new camera button, and it's touch sensitive. You can press it to open the camera, or use it to zoom. I've been doing phone repairs for so long now that when I see a new iPhone feature, I immediately think, what will happen when I replace it? Will it work? Or will the software block me? I've also loaded iTest onto each phone, which we'll use throughout the video. Starting with the white phone, I'll place it on a heat plate, set it high for 5 to 10 minutes. Once the phone is sufficiently heated, we can begin opening it. After removing the two pentalobe screws from the base of the device, I can use a suction cup to lift up on the display and create a small gap, just wide enough to wedge a plastic pick in. Then I can use the pick to slice through the adhesive. Once free, I can carefully lift the display to the left. I'll repeat this process for the other phone. The adhesive used on the iPhone still remains as one of the toughest in the industry. I suppose that's good for water resistance at great depths, but not so good for repair. However, with the right equipment and a lot of heat, it can be opened. But there's nothing to see under the display. So once unplugged, I'll begin opening the other side of each phone. The opening procedure is identical to the front. Like the front, the back panel also uses clips in addition to adhesive. So it's important to lift up slightly to unlatch the clips before rotating it to the side. And there's our first look inside Apple's iPhone 16. It's good to see Apple has stuck with the dual opening design, allowing for both easy display and back glass replacements. It was only a few years ago that if you broke your back glass panel, you'd either have to use a specialized laser machine to burn away the adhesive, or replace the entire housing, which involved complete disassembly of the phone. Because we're going to be swapping parts between phones, I'm going to color code parts with a sticker that corresponds to the color of the phone, to make it easy to follow. Our first test is quite simple, a replacement display. To do this, I'll swap the screens between the phones. Doing this same test on previous models of iPhone would result in several functions of the phone being disabled and an intrusive non-genuine screen message displaying on first boot. Let's see what happens with the iPhone 16. The lock screen displays a notification from settings. After logging in, I was expecting a non-genuine screen pop-up like previous iPhone repair assessments, but one never appeared. And that notification wasn't a scary warning about non-genuine parts, but a message prompting me to finish my display repair. How unexpected. Before clicking finish repair, I want to check the functionality of our swap displays. To no surprise, it acts just like that of the previous iPhone repair assessments I've conducted. True tone has vanished, auto brightness doesn't work, and through the help of eye test, we can verify the light sensor isn't working either. This is something we've seen before, but we've never had the option to pair a new display. Once booted into Repair Assistant, you connect to Wi-Fi, agree to share your device identifiers with Apple, and then the part is linked to the phone. 
When we restart, Settings now lists our display as used under Service History. And all those disabled features have returned and are enabled on our new screen. It essentially works like the original screen did. But before you get too excited, this worked because I met a specific Apple approved criteria to have this part paired. The reason the screen didn't just work when I connected it is because Apple is still in complete control of repair on this device. By agreeing to share my device info with Apple, they could see that the screen I had installed come from another iPhone 16. That's why it was approved. Apple has found a way to check if the part is genuine. What I said four years ago about Apple's stance on blocking third-party repair still holds true. This system is engineered to block third-party parts, but now allow used Apple parts if they meet Apple's criteria. This is still better than what we had before, but as we're about to find out, this new system isn't as good as it first seems. If I now swap the screens back, I'll have to redo this pairing process. After doing so, the phone is now tainted. Despite being its original factory screen, it's recorded that I changed it. But you're not going to buy two new iPhones and swap parts between them. We need to emulate a real repair. When you buy a replacement screen, you usually have to transfer the sensor cable as it's not included with the screen. On previous iPhones, failure to transfer this little cable could disable things like Face ID, True Tone and Auto Brightness. So we'll install an unpaired new display with the phone's original sensor cable. When we do this, we see the finished repair message as it's identified the new display as genuine. However, shortly after receiving this message, it turns into an unknown part message and will no longer let me pair the screen. On the other phone, I thought I'd try pairing the display before it had time to identify it as unknown. Clicking Finish Repair brought up an error message, and after loading back into the parts page, it's now also displayed as an unknown part, like in the other phone. And it says that it's unable to determine if it's genuine, meaning our new screen is running at a reduced capacity with the usual disabled features. But what about the other way around, an original paired display with a replacement sensor cable? Well, our display remains paired and no unknown parts messages appear, but despite the screen being paired, it suffers from the same disabled features. It appears Apple is using this cable in conjunction with the display to determine if you're able to pair your replacement display. I'll get the sensors back to their matching screens before we proceed any further. Turning our attention to the back of the iPhone, we can continue our teardown. I met with a new bracket, which is latched into place. It needs to be slid forward after the two tri-wing security screws are removed. While we will completely disassemble the phone, I first want to check for any further software paired parts. The easiest way to test this is to simply swap the logic board between both phones, meaning everything will be replaced. This will allow me to identify what components are software paired in the iPhone 16 and if they can be recalibrated. Disassembly of the iPhone 16 is very similar to previous models. There's a lot of flex cables that need to be unplugged, including one tiny little flex cable for the buttons located in the right corner. We'll also need to take out the earpiece speaker to gain access to one of the logic board screws. Once all the cables and screws are detached, the board can be pulled free. This is the heart of the iPhone 16, housing Apple's A18 processor, 128GB of storage, and the software that prohibits third-party replacement parts. Once I've removed both logic boards, I'll label each with its corresponding sticker and place it in the other phone. After everything's reattached, we can close up the phones and give them a test. The phone on the right didn't power up with the press of a button. Connecting a charger will bring it to life. From experience, this is an intended behavior, which may be to prevent the phone from switching on during repair. It's at this point I discovered a discrepancy. I noticed the left phone screen was dim, so I turned up the brightness. But after doing so, it was about half as bright as the phone on the right. Now, we know that a replacement screen disables auto brightness, but even manually adjusting the screen brightness to zero and back up to 100%, it was still dim. The phone on the left also had an extra settings notification. Amongst the plethora of repair notifications, 
was one listed display not recognized. For some reason, the phone hasn't detected the screen as genuine, and it's also now 50% less bright than the phone on the right, which doesn't display this message. After some time, the display was picked up as genuine, and the brightness magically returned to full. Third-party screens are not currently available at the time of testing, which means I cannot confirm that this lowered brightness is deliberately applied to third-party screens. It could just be a bug, but if Apple can disable the light sensor, which breaks auto brightness and true tone, they could in theory reduce the maximum brightness. Although I was not able to replicate this issue again with the genuine displays I have. So this is an issue I'll have to follow up on, but like I said earlier, it could have just been a bug. What you might have also noticed is that Apple has managed to software pair the enclosure and glass on the back of the phone. How you ask? Well, for the enclosure, my first guess is the new camera button. It still works in an unpaired state, which is nice. If I disconnect its cable, the message about the replacement enclosure vanishes, plug it back in, and it reappears. As for the back glass, we can blame the wireless charging coil for rutting us out. This little chip is the likely culprit. However, wireless charging still works. With the device in an unpaired state, it acts somewhat erratically, just like we found with other recent iPhone models. These include a non-functional front camera, disabled battery health, face ID, auto brightness, and true tone. Of course, the difference being that these are all genuine parts, so we should be able to utilize the new parts pairing tool. I'm only going to attempt this on one phone so that I can see if the newly paired parts will still work on their original phone once I swap them back. The pairing process succeeded, however, no history is shown for the back glass and enclosure. This is the first time you can replace your own Face ID module with one from another iPhone. I understand the reason a component like a face scanner or fingerprint reader needs to be verified as genuine, so it's nice that you can pair a genuine replacement. However, for components like the back glass and enclosure, it just seems silly. I'll also run our newly paired phone through iTest to check the functionality of major hardware components. And everything passes, with all ticks. Now it's time to put these phones back together with their original parts. At the same time, we'll be able to see if the blue phone will accept its original parts or require them to be paired as they've since been linked to the silver phone's logic board. Powering on the blue iPhone 16, we can see it hasn't rejected the parts that we paired to the silver phone. The silver phone that we programmed to the blue phone's parts now has to be reprogrammed to accept its originals. But I had a bit of a mess around with the date and time to see if I could get the phone to say it was repaired in 2007. This didn't work, but triggered another error, which reveals another drawback to this system. You must be running the latest iOS version to finish a repair. This means if Apple was to change the way in which pairing works or what's eligible, you'll be forced to comply by installing the newest software. But the repair tool accepted August as a valid date. That's prior to the public release of this phone. After calibration was complete, the parts now display as genuine instead of used. But by far the most interesting change on this iPhone model is the battery. I'm going to show you how to remove it using a 9 volt battery. Instead of the old stretch release adhesive, Apple has changed to this electrifying setup. Simply attach a 9 volt power source, the positive to the little tab on the battery, and ground to the charge port screw and wait a minute and 30 seconds. And the battery should come out. It didn't, so I tried for another minute and 30. And what happened afterwards was truly amazing. The battery just popped right out. No dealing with heat, alcohol, or broken tabs. This is actually amazing. I'm impressed. And the adhesive is still sticky, so you could stick the battery back in if you wished. This battery is rated at having a capacity of 3,561 milliamp hours, or 14.84 watt hours. Before we wrap things up for this teardown, I want to get a look at that camera button. 
Let's see the newest paired component up close. The touch section connects with a miniature flex cable that I don't know how I'll ever get reconnected, with the button being situated behind it. The touch pad portion looks like it's been welded in place, with no obvious way to remove it, at least without damaging it, so this is as far as I'll go. Unbelievably, I managed to connect that miniature flex cable on the first go. Now it's just the case of getting its little bracket attached before I get the stickers applied on top. With that, there's not much left inside this iPhone frame. We have the cameras, the SIM tray, Taptic engine, and charge port. They're all pretty standard and similar to last year, so I won't be removing them. But we've disassembled a good portion of the iPhone 16 and tested its repairability. Now we've just got to get it all back together again. Now that both phones are back in one piece, we can power them up and see they're still working. And we're done. So this is it. The iPhone 16 teardown and repair assessment completed. There was a great deal of information to take in, so let's recap. Apple still have complete control over the repair of their iPhone. The new repair assistant allows you to link genuine Apple parts if they meet Apple's criteria, which is subject to change. Third-party parts are still prohibited from working correctly. Apple now pairs the housing and back glass, and the battery has a new method of removal. With Apple's repair assistant requiring the internet and latest iOS, it leaves iPhone repair in a very volatile state. What we discovered today could be rendered obsolete in a future software update. Apple also appears to be adding activation lock to parts, which could further complicate this process. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing and check out the Teardown and Repair Assessment playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.